Hey there, Carnage Cravers. Welcome back to Carnage Corner. I am Ken Carnage, and it is time for a uh, weekly overview of uh, all the WWE's programming, uh, as well as a uh, little bit of a prediction show for the upcoming events, which are, of course, the biggest events of the year, NXT New TakeOver New Orleans, and, of course, WrestleMania 30. So uh, we're going to got a lot to cover. We're going to jump right in here talking about Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw opened with Jonathan Coachman in the ring, bringing out Triple H and Stephanie, bringing out Ronda and Kurt. And uh, <clears throat> it, uh, they had a little like interview segment and uh, uh, I, the, the whole thing is a bit of a cluster. I mean, they gave Ronda one good line, you know, where she asked Stephanie which uh, which hand she writes with because she wanted to make sure she would still be able to sign Ronda's checks after she uh, ripped her arm off. So, I mean, that, that, that was the only part that was any good. And Ronda even almost screwed that up because line delivery is not her strong suit. Um, but, but to make matters worse, so, you know, they, they set up to do this picture, and so Triple H attacks Kurt from behind, and Ronda grabs Kurt by the, uh, grabs, uh, Triple H by the throat, and then Stephanie puts Ronda through a table. And Ronda just lies there and looks at her. I mean, Ronda tries to sell, but selling is not something Ronda's exactly used to doing. She's very new to it. And she doesn't do it that well yet. Um, I mean, I have confidence that she can get better, but as of right now, she's not that good. Um, so, yeah. Um, and to make matters worse, Steph just stands over yelling at her. Rhonda's conscious. If Rhonda is conscious, why isn't Rhonda getting up and beating the fuck out of Stephanie? And if Rhonda is conscious and Stephanie has her down, why isn't Stephanie jumping on her and beating the holy hell out of her, trying to take advantage of this very small opportunity that she's got? The, 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 they are promoting this as if Rhonda and Stephanie are equals. Physically, they are not equals. There's no reason for them to present them as equals. Stephanie should be scared to death. Stephanie should be scared shitless, okay? They're, 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 it's being reported they, they want uh, Rhonda to be a uh, Stone Cold style babyface, okay? So if she's Stone Cold, that makes Stephanie v uh, Mr. McMahon, right? Okay? Vince was always scared of Steve! Unless Vince was surrounded by people, unless he had his corporation with him, he was always scared of Steve. Okay, it just the. I think there's too much ego involved here. I think they're handling Ronda all wrong. Uh, I, I, they're counting on the fact that oh, she's you know she the biggest superstar of women's fighting and whatnot. Uh, you, you can't destroy her credibility. Tell that to Ken Shamrock. Yes, you can destroy her credibility, and you are doing a damn good job of it. <sighs> Anyways, I'm going to move on from this. I could literally rant about this for fucking hours, but I'm not going to. I'm going to move on. I have a lot to cover. So... Uh, uh, we then get the, the Miz on commentary for a match between Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. Uh, great match. I don't know why you're giving it away for free. Um, you know, on national television. Um, the, 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 that's a pay-per-view That's a pay -per -view, uh, caliber match. I mean, literally. A match that main evented SummerSlam should not be the opening match on Raw. I, I mean, seriously. And you wonder why... You know, like it, it's hard for you to build equity in in people anymore. It's the 50/50 booking. It's the giving shit away from free. You're not making people wait for it. You're not making people anticipate it. I, I mean, not for nothing. Take a lesson from Paul Heyman. The feud 
leading up to, I want to say it was barely legal. I think it was the first barely legal. Okay, you had Taz and Sabu wanting to kill each other. They didn't touch for damn near a fucking year. Didn't even get close to each other. Pull aparts, not getting each other, one-upsmanship, talking trash. They built that shit to the point where, I mean, when they finally got to the match, when they finally got to Taz versus Sabu, the, the, they built up to it so much that Taz and Sabu, two of the greatest performers in ECW history, if not wrestling history altogether, Okay, those two performers had a hard time living up to the hype because Heyman had built the fucking hype right. <sighs> to make a long story short, Rollins won. <sighs> Moving on. We get Kurt and Paul Heyman, speaking of Paul backstage and Kurt wants Paul to not do anything that will incite uh, or instigate Roman Reigns to hurt or injure Brock Lesnar. Heyman and I both had quite a belly laugh about this. Uh, oh yes, very, very, a very, very deep chuckle. Uh, very deep chuckle. The Samoan princess is not hurting the beast. I'm sorry. It's not happening. Roman only gets to be a tough guy because that's how Vince writes him. Brock Lesnar's actually a tough guy, so <laughs> you, you, get, you can fuck off with that shit, okay? Um, we then go to the ring. The bar is in the ring. They're doing their promo, uh, you know, telling Bra Braun, we don't care who your partner is anymore because whoever it is, you won't be able to be a good team, <laughs> okay? And then all of a sudden, out comes Braun. He says he's got a partner. He's going to go get him, and then out comes Brains, Strowman. This is just stupid. I don't know which writer came up with this, but you need to fire his ass. This was stupid. Especially, especially because Corey Graves went, because Braun comes out in a, in a, with a white shirt and glasses, and now he's Brains. And he gets in the ring and he takes that stuff off and Corey Graves, and Corey Graves goes, Hey, wait, that's Braun! Seriously. Seriously. <sighs> to make a, a, a long story short, uh, Brains Strowman beat up on the bar. Uh, or Braun Brains, whatever. All right, so uh, we then get uh, Alexa and Mickey in a uh, like a little vignette pre-recorded thing. Um, <clears throat> now, I may uh, if you've been following my show, you know that I am critical of the booking of Nia Jax, and I've made some comments that have been considered to be mean. But Alexa just made me look like a saint uh, <laughs> uh, with one line uh, in, saying that Naya will be uh, blubbering in her blubber oh that's that's rough and I we here's the thing if we're, if we're plugged into into this and we know what goes on behind the scenes we, we know that Naya and Alexa are very good friends they're best friends in real life. So, I mean, we know Nia signed off on this, but, oh, that's harsh. That one's harsh. <laughs> um, so, that, that, that being said, we then go to a John Cena promo, in which Cena, in one last ditch effort, attempts to incite The Undertaker. And, you know, and Cena talks all this shit. And, and here's the funny thing. The immature people, the immature fans, uh, you know, the, the ones who um, have a, you know, uh, a self-confidence issue, in many cases maybe have never actually been in a fight in their life, um, or just, you know, they're con or, or are constantly worried about what other people think of them. 
they're going to be like, oh my god, Cena's destroying Taker because he's saying all this stuff about him. And why doesn't Taker do something? It's really simple, okay? Right now, John Cena is like that drunk jackass, okay? That little drunk jackass sitting on the bar stool next to the toughest guy in town. He's drunk off his ass. He's talking shit. He's running his mouth. Yeah. The toughest guy in town, he can turn around and knock him out. But what the fuck for? Waste of energy. Waste of time. The drunk's only harmful to himself. He can't actually do anything to you. So why are you going to sweat him? That is Undertaker's attitude with Cena. I don't, you know, or, and that's what it looks like. Now... There is, because Cena's going to be a fan at WrestleMania, there is still a chance that Cena will be in the crowd. And, well, no, Cena will be in the crowd at WrestleMania. So, uh, there is a chance, there's still a chance to see something between Undertaker and him. Personally, I think that would be a mistake. Um, I really do. I... Um, I think if we do see Undertaker, we will not see the dead man. Uh, I think it's more likely, if we do see Taker at all, I think we'll be seeing the American Badass. Um, which, I mean, some people might be into that. Some people may not be into that. I, I don't know. I, um, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, is there a chance that Kid Rock performs American Badass and Undertaker comes out on his bike and calls Cena into the ring and, you know, bitch slaps him? I mean, it's possible. It's possible. But on a WrestleMania where the, the card is already the biggest card in fucking history with the most matches in history, I mean, I somehow doubt it. I'm, I'm certainly not going to call it like it's going to happen. F for sure, I'm not. But, uh, I, I mean, you have to ask yourself, why would they be doing this thing with Cena this whole time? A and why on earth, <clears throat> you know, and are they really going to have Cena in the crowd for the whole show? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it, it, it's fugazi. It's a little fugazi. But, uh, then we get Kurt and Roman in the locker room. And Roman, uh, Roman implies that, uh, that Kurt Angle pawned his gold medals, which, I mean, that's an asshole thing to say. Um, you know. <clears throat> I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. They keep trying all these things. <sighs> they keep trying all these things that don't work that well. Uh, oh, I... I mean, maybe they work for some people. I mean, Roman being disrespectful. I mean, I'll, I'll go back to the early days of DX when, you know, when Triple H was uh, disrespecting Sergeant Slaughter all the time, you know. And, and I'll be honest, like, some people may like that. I didn't like that then either, you know. It's, uh... <clears throat> I, I didn't like that then either. There is a certain, you know amount of respect due to your elders that that is the way i was raised that is the way i believe um now if you're uh, you know if your elders are bang out of order then yeah i understand the uh a little rebellion but uh i, I just i don't know roman reigns being an asshole unnecessarily is unnecessary you know so <clears throat> Excuse me. So then we go to uh, we go we go backstage and uh, Kurt Hawkins wants to be Braun Strowman's partner. Braun asks him what his win loss record is and throws him through a wall. Okay. Uh, they do an interview with Nia. Uh, I I I'm gonna be honest. I didn't catch most of that. I had something going on. I didn't catch most of that. I'm pretty sure that Nia said all the right things and uh, yeah, that's that. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So then we go into uh, Asuka and Dana Brooke versus Alexa and Mickey. Uh, Asuka wins. She she chokes out uh, Mickey James. That really should not be a surprise. Because um, they're not going to have her beat Alexa going into WrestleMania. 
Uh, but they're also not going to have Asuka lose going into WrestleMania, so it only makes sense. Um, so, but as soon as uh, Mickey taps, Alexa attacks, and then, you know, Mickey and Alexa are beating up on Asuka and Dana, and out comes Nia. And Nia goes and attacks, and Alexa escapes, but Mickey doesn't. Mickey gets flattened uh, with a Samoan drop. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So then we get uh, Kurt stopping Paul and Brock on their way to the ring, and Paul reassures Kurt that he's not going to not not going to uh, say anything to harm Roman Reigns' delicate feelings. Th those are not the words he used, but he might as well have. Uh, and then of course Brock and Heyman go in the ring, and, and Kurt has superstar stand and block the ramp, which causes Paul Heyman to say things Kurt didn't want him to say. You know, and uh, and Paul goes in, and Roman come. You know, Paul goes in on the promo. Roman comes out. And convinces the locker room to stand aside so he can get to the ring. You know, and he goes and, he, you know, he, he ends up hitting Brock with four Superman punches. And, but and, and, you know, and he looks away for a second and he gets that fived. Um, you know, and they're just... It's kind of hard to build hype for this match when we all know how it's going to end. All right? We, we all know Roman put in his time... You know, with his Monica pads under Vince's desk, and he's going to get the Universal title. We all know that Brock's going to go make some more money at UFC, and, you know, and can basically come back anytime he wants. Uh, you know, if and when he comes back, hopefully he comes back, and at the very least comes to every pay-per-view. Because I'm, I'm not one of the people who's a Brock Lesnar hater. I like Brock. I, I like Brock as champion. I just wish he was defending at every pay-per-view. I don't care if he's not on Raw. You ain't gotta be on Raw. Defend at every pay-per-view. I mean, that's it. You can have Paul Heyman on every Raw to talk for Brock. Brock show up at the pay-per-views, be a wrecking machine, go back to his fortress in Canada, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, it, 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 it's as simple as that. But this whole thing of not having the title defended at every pay per view hurts the title, hurts the programming, hurts the show, hurts Brock because it turned people against him, which is why they did it because they want people to cheer for Roman Reigns. But here's the thing it's difficult to get people to cheer for a douche. I'm sorry. It's difficult to get people to cheer for a douche. And that was how they ended Raw. Going into some Magdown, we got a uh, we, we started off with the the, the little tree hugging Hobbit bastard uh, out in the ring, and uh, he brings out Shane, and we find out that Shane is in fact medically cleared for WrestleMania. Yada 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 yada. Okay. So, and then, of course, we our first match is Charlotte versus Natalia. Okay, this is a match we've seen so many times that it no longer matters. Um, you know, and at one point, Charlotte's in a bad way, and out comes Carmella to cash in. But she doesn't cash in. Carmella must have the record, not just for longest time with the briefcase, because she does have that, but the record for... Uh, the, 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 the record for most times failed to actually cash in. <laughs> uh, you know, Charlotte kicked the briefcase away. The cash-in didn't actually happen. And uh, and Natalia tried to steal the victory and was unsuccessful as, um, you know, Charlotte locked in her figure eight and, you know, Natty tapped. So that, uh, that that's all that. But after, after all of that, Asuka comes out. And uh, Asuka gets herself a microphone to, to, you know, say that nobody's ready for Asuka. And Charlotte grabs it away from her and says that she is ready. And, uh, and Asuka's got that crazy smile and those crazy eyes. A Asuka's looking forward to this match, as am I. Um, you know, um, Asuka's, if, if I'm, you know, to be bold, I will say that Asuka's going to beat Charlotte. 
Asuka is going to become the SmackDown Women's Champion. It's going to be a war, mind you. And then Carmella is going to cash in and become Women's Champion, taking the belt from Asuka, ending Asuka's streak, all in one fell swoop. And this will put monster, monster heat on Carmella. So. That's, that, that's what I think is going to happen. So, uh, that being said, we will go. I wasn't supposed to do predictions yet, but I did. So, um, we then get an, an interview with AJ Styles where he's talking about how, you know, Shinsuke Nakamura is not in his head like he thinks he is. Blah, 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 blah. All right. And then we go to uh, Jinder Mahal versus Rusev. And uh, Bobby Roode is on commentary. And, uh. This bothered me. During this match, they decided to go to the double screen and give you a promo for the Raw Universal Championship match at WrestleMania. What the hell? Like, that, that, first off, that's a giant... Fuck you to the competitors in that match, okay? That's a giant fuck you to uh, Jinder and to Rusev, okay? And, and to the announce staff, and to Bobby Roode, and to everybody involved in the in that angle. That's a big fuck you, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is, why are you promoting a Raw match on SmackDown? It's supposed to be separate brands, isn't it? They're supposed to be competing brands, ain't they? Why? 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 Also, it, it, it furthers the stigma that SmackDown is the B-show. You know, SmackDown has the potential to not be the B-show if they would stop doing shit like this. Also, if they would fire Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. But, neither here nor there. So... <clears throat> But, so, yeah, I, I didn't like that. But uh, Rusev wins the match. Good for Rusev. Uh, and then there was an RKO out of nowhere on Rusev. And English attacks. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, English gets RKO'd as well. And then we get a stare, stare down between uh, Bobby Roode and Randy Orton. So, um, and Roode hands the United States Championship to Orton. So, uh, and they have their little stare down. And then we go to a Shinsuke Nakamura interview. And, uh, you know, he's basically talking about how he, how he is in AJ's head. And AJ is too emotional and yada, 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 yada. And we get New Day backstage. And the Usos come in. And basically this whole thing was to promote the WWE Network. And uh, I, it felt forced. It felt contrived. And, uh, you know, here, here's a here's a... A tip for Jimmy. I think it was Jimmy. Jimmy, if you're going to talk and you want us to understand you, son, take that shit off your teeth. You got this, you got that grill on your teeth. It, it yanks you to they get, and not quite that bad, but dude, dude, Shinsuke is easier to understand than you when you got that thing in your mouth. All right, bro. <laughs> I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be mean, but seriously, if you want people to understand you, take that thing out your mouth. So, uh, <clears throat> and then at the uh, at the end of that, they the, they they get out of there because the Bludgeon Brothers come in, and the Bludgeon Brothers smash the camera. Yay! Um, so, and then we they went into an eight man tag match, and I missed most of it, unfortunately. I, I, maybe I should go back and watch it, but it was only it was promoting the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, so. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not overly concerned. I do know Baron Corbin won, so, you know, good for Corbin, I guess. Um, you know, so. <clears throat> we, uh, then we go to a, uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable vignette talking about how they're going to, uh, they're, they're going to have AJ and Shinsuke limping into WrestleMania after their match. Um. Kevin and Sammy uh, came out of the crowd to cut themselves a promo. Um, yeah, during their promo, we go to the back. We see that Shane and Daniel are watching on the television. 
excuse me, and uh, and so they leave to come out, and uh, you know as soon as soon as they realize they're coming, you know uh, Kevin and Sammy they they they, they get the hell out of da they get the hell out of Dodge, and uh, Sheen and Daniel of course they uh, you know they 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 talk from the stage. I think Kevin said something about uh, Daniel's daughter. And, uh, you know, trying to fire people up and get people behind Daniel. Because the fact of the matter is, is up until very recently, they have had Daniel Bryan acting like a, uh, um, acting like a jackass. He's been, uh, you know, he's been essentially on the side of uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. You know, on the side of anarchy. Um... Uh, you know, so I, I've never liked Daniel. I never liked Sammy. I'll admit there was a time when uh, I, I was uh, intrigued by Kevin Owens. Uh, it was during he was it was when he was in NXT, and uh, I, I quickly you know once they brought him to the main roster, I quickly realized you know what, no, I I, I don't much care for this, but uh, <clears throat> you know that that being said, so. They, they they do that whole thing. And then we go into the main event, which is Shinsuke teaming with AJ versus Ch Chad. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, again, long story short, AJ and Shinsuke, they win. Uh, phenomenal forum to Chad Gable. AJ gets the pin. Shelton Benjamin attacks. Uh, you know, fight back. Uh, well, actually, it was, uh, AJ had left the ring and Shelton attacked Shinsuke. AJ's gonna go back to help, but Shinsuke gets the upper hand and, you know, doesn't need help. So AJ does a phenomenal forearm, or it looks like he does, because he stops short of actually hitting Shinsuke, you know, to get inside his head the way Shinsuke had done last week to him. You know, it's a tit-for-tat thing, and, um... And you know that that's that's that that was how they ended SmackDown. Uh, Two hundred five live, or or as it's more commonly called, midgets on trampolines, um, started with a uh, tag match: Hideo, Ata Hideo Itami and Akira Tozawa versus Grand Metalik and La uh, Lance Dorado. So what what we have here is a. Uh, it's funny. It's it's symbolism because outside of the United States. Uh, the two biggest wrestling companies in the world are New Japan Pro Wrestling, obviously set out of Japan. It's, it's in the name, okay? And uh, and then you have, <clears throat> I'm actually I'm not sure which is bigger, whether, whether in Mexico, whether it be AAA or CMLL. Uh, I don't actually know which one's bigger, but point is, is outside of the U.S., the two biggest hotspots for wrestling are Japan and Mexico. And in this match, we got Japan versus Mexico. Uh, and great, uh, you know, d a good match, great competitors. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I do prefer Itami and Tozawa over uh, Metalik and uh, Dorado, although Dorado's very good. Um, you know, I, I won't say he's on the level of a Rey Mysterio or anything like that, but he, he's good, uh, you know. Um, of course, bear in mind, I'm not the biggest fan of the high-flying style. So, there, there's that to consider as well. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> we then go into, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the match gets thrown out. It's, um, I guess, technically, Metalik and Dorado win by DQ, but they didn't announce that because, you know, the match got thrown out because tempers got high and they wouldn't listen to the referee, and so disqualification ensued. Um, I, I'm thinking these two teams are going to end up going at it for the brand new Cruiserweight Tag Team Championships. Uh, that seems to be what they're setting up, and I'm okay with it. <clears throat> We get a vignette from Gulak talking about Mark Andrews, and then shortly thereafter, a vignette with Andrews talking about Gulak. <clears throat> Those two are going to go at it next week on 205 Live. Uh, we then get Tony Nese versus Jonathan Pierce. Um, 
and Jonathan Pierce is for all intents and purposes a jobber, but they did give him much more to do than your average jobber. Uh, got to put on a little bit of a show, good for him. Tony Nese still wins, obviously. So, um, and then we got Kalisto and Buddy Murphy in the trainer's room. Kalisto, of course, checking on his friend and Buddy Murphy wanting to have a word with Kalisto before their match. Uh, <clears throat> and they go in, and then they go in, right after the break, they go into Kalisto versus Buddy Murphy. Uh, a great match. Good competitors. Uh, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't think I would be, but I am definitely a Buddy Murphy fan at this point. I like this guy. Um, <clears throat> And Murphy wins. And then uh, Drake Maverick has a little vignette where he basically begs people to watch the WrestleMania pre-show because that's where the Cruiserweight Championship match will be. Uh, going into NXT, uh, they opened up with AO Authors of Pain versus uh, Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne. This is the, the finals of the Dusty Classic to decide who's going to challenge for the NXT tag titles at TakeOver New Orleans. <clears throat> Oh, good match. Great match. Was loving it. I don't like Roderick Strong, and I was still loving it. And uh, <clears throat> Undisputed Era comes in and attacks, results in a double DQ, you know, no winner named. Uh, as Undisputed Era is leaving, it is uh, William Regal who comes out and says, Haha, you think you're funny? Nope. You're not getting out of this match on Sunday. Now, <clears throat> now it'll be a triple threat match. Triple threat tag team match. And the winner will not only be the winner of the Dusty Classic, but the winner of the uh, NXT Tag Team Championship. So, there's that. Uh, we then got Kyrie Sane versus Vanessa Bourne. And uh, I like Kyrie Sane. This is uh, <clears throat> nothing against Vanessa Bourne. Uh, but I, I really like Kyrie Sane. The character, the moveset, the personality. I like her. Uh, she's got a huge upside. Uh, I think that uh, I think that she would be a great, great foil for a Shayna B Shayna Baszler, especially once they put the title on Baszler. You know, Kyrie can definitely be that chasing baby face. I, you know, and uh, I I think that'll go really, really good. I really do. <clears throat> um, also, saying is I think those two were the finalists in the 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 May Young Classic. I think. I think. I think. I, I, I would have to check. Anyways, uh, Kyrie Sane wins that match. We then go to an interview earlier in the day, like a press conference type thing with all the, all the, yeah. And uh, Lacey Evans giving an interview, basically talking trash about everybody, including Kyrie Sane. And uh, we then come back to present time, and Regal is actually exiting the building, and uh, Undisputed Era... They, they come up to him, they're pissed off, and uh, Regal basically tells them, you know, suck it up, Buttercup. and uh, Or, uh, uh, Regal likes to call them Sunshine. It's so condescending, I love it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we then go back to the ring for Lars Sullivan versus Killian Dane. God. I could watch these two beat the crap out of each other for... You know, they could do this match as many times as they want. I will never get sick of it. You got these two big bulls locking it up in that ring. I love I love Lars Sullivan. Uh, he's great. He's got the great look, explosive energy, power. Dane also, you know, for, for a man of his size who looks like him, he's surprisingly fast. Uh, they, they were having a good match. And of course, it all it, it all ended up bra breaking down uh, with the other members of the ladder match for this Saturday getting involved. You know, Adam Cole, um, the Velveteen Dream, EC3, and Ricochet, resulting in what was essentially a six-way stare down in the middle of the ring to go off air. So, <clears throat> so now I'm going to talk predictions a little bit. Um, we're, we're going to talk predictions a little bit. So, predictions are as follows. Uh, we have Ciampa versus Gargano on Saturday. Gargano's probably going to win. Uh, you know, that that would be my prediction. Gargano's going to win. I would prefer for Ciampa to win. I like Ciampa much better. I, I just never liked Gargano. But uh, uh, Gargano will most likely win. Now, the six-way 
ladder match for the uh, the new North Amer- NXT North American Championship, which, by the way, have you seen that belt? Oh my god, it's such a throwback. It's so gorgeous. I mean, we're, t- we're talking brown strap, gold plates, simple design. Looks prestigious as fuck. I like it. I really like it. I mean, I really, really like it. Might be my favorite looking belt on the freaking entire company. Of course, that's because most of the belts today look like they came out of a goddamn Cracker Jack box. I digress. Okay, so who do I think is going to win that? Oh, God, that's damn near impossible to call. If I had to guess, I would say it's either going to be EC3 or Ricochet. Now, I haven't seen much of Ricochet. I saw some of EC3 last week, not in the not in the ring, but, uh, you know, as character-wise. I didn't think I was going to like EC3, but goddamn, that, 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 is a, that is a good narcissistic heel right there. I, I can get behind that, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I will narrow it down. It's either going to be EC3 or it will be Ricochet. Um, that, that, that is, that, that's my thought process. I think Velveteen Dream is going to end up getting called up soon. Uh, along with probably Lars Sullivan most likely getting called up soon. I mean... Uh, Lars would be you turn Lars heel there's no end to the amount of people you can have him work with so <laughs> now as far as uh, the three way tag match Undisputed Era AOP and Strong and Dunn I mean I'm gonna be be honest I, I don't want Undisputed Era to win I'm not I'm not a big fan and as much as I love AOP, I would like to see AOP come up to the main roster. Um, you know, possibly come up to, to Raw or even to SmackDown. Either way, I'd like to see AOP come up. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I guess I'll say I'd like for uh, Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne to win. I'm not a Roderick Strong fan. I don't really like the guy. I do love Pete Dunne. I mean, Pete Dunne is like a tiny British Taz. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm imagining Taz's response to me referring to Pete Dunn as a tiny British Taz. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> move on. Um so yeah, that that that's what I would like to see happen as far as what they'll do. The booking's not obvious enough for me to really call. Um I wouldn't feel comfortable making a prediction or putting money down on it. I can tell you what I want, but you know, we can want in one hand shit in the other, and you know why that works. So, <clears throat> uh, we got Ember Moon versus Shayna Baszler. Uh, I, I I think Baszler's going to win, and I think that's the way it should be. Uh, Baszler will be NXT Women's Champion. Ember Moon will move up to the uh, to to one of the main roster shows. Um, I don't I don't really care which. I, I actually, not for nothing, uh, you move her up to Raw. And let her, uh, yeah, let her go with Naya. I actually think that that might be good. Or put her in a feud with uh, Sasha Banks. You might actually get people to care about Sasha Banks again. Don't hold your breath though. Um, so, and then of course we have the NXT Championship match, which is Andrade Cien Almas versus Alistair Black. Uh, Black, Black, Black. Alistair Black will win this title. Alistair Black should win this title. And don't worry about calling Andrade Cien Almas up to the main roster. You can take him and that little fuck doll, a fuck doll he's parading around with him and just send them away. I, I don't care where they go as long as I don't have to see them anymore. So, um, and that, that that's the wrap up on NXT TakeOver New Orleans predictions. Now, WrestleMania... That's a little different. Um, who will win the uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? I don't freaking know. We don't even know everybody that's going to be in it. Okay? Uh, <laughs> I mean, they could do Corbin again. They definitely gave him momentum, but it's there's it's a battle royal. Anyone can win. It's, it's a lot harder to call one of those things. Same thing with the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal. 
And yes, I'm still calling it the Fabulous Moolah Battle Royal. It is absolute bullshit that a bunch of idiots with nothing better to do than bitch freaking cause the WWE to not honor uh, Moolah in name. Like, seriously, what is wrong with you people? First off, allegations... Uh, 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 an allegation is not a conviction, A. So, uh, you know, we do have a system where it is innocent until proven guilty, whether you communists like it or not. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, A, there, there's no proof. You've got, you've got people saying that she did these things. You also have people saying that she didn't. So, okay. Um, and to, to make matters worse, A, she's dead. She's fucking dead. What are you, what, what, seriously, seriously, why are, why do people continue to, this group of people, mind you, it always seems to be, continue to harp, harp on the alleged crimes of people who are dead? They're not even here to dispute the claims anymore. Sounds like a good way for you to rewrite history, fuck tarts. All right, I'm going to move on. Um, Alex, uh, Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali for the Cruiserweight Championship. <sighs> this is my scheduled bathroom break. Yep. Uh, I don't give a damn. Don't, don't care. I, I would have rather seen Buddy Murphy and Drew Gulak in this uh, just because the, the, they wrestle they wrestle the style that I like better but uh you know the, the, you got the high flyers going at it which is which is fine whatever I'll take my bathroom break at that point in time um so uh Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns we all know that Roman Reigns is going to win okay as I said earlier Roman logged his time with his Monica pads under Vince's desk he's going to win that being said I really really hope they swerve us and Brock retains. You could take that universal title, that fucking ugly ass fruit roll up belt, you put it on anybody but Roman, I'll say okay. No. They're, they're, they're so desperate to make him the top guy in the company. No. AJ Styles is Shinsuke Nakamura. I, I really think that Nakamura will win. I'm okay with Nakamura winning. Uh, if they have AJ win, I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna be upset. Uh, I, you know, I like both guys. Um, but I, I think I think Shinsuke will walk away with the win. Um, I, I really do. So. Um, as for the triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship match, uh, Miz, Seth, uh, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor. Miz is not going to win. I, I'm sure Miz is going to want to take time off now that his child's been born. Congratulations, Miz. Congratulations, Miz. By the way, um, you know it's um, you know good for him. No, no better feeling than uh, you know you're be, being a first time dad. So, um, I'm, actually, I can't say that. I have no comparison for being a first time mom, as I'm not a woman, but. The sentiment's the same. You get what I'm saying. Congratulations. Um, so, that being said, the question is, do I think it'll be Seth Rollins or Finn Balor? Uh, I think Finn Balor is really suited for the Intercontinental Championship. I really do. On the other hand, if they put the Intercontinental Championship on Seth Rollins, he becomes a Grand Slam champion. So, I mean, either way, I don't... I, I, I'm not going to be upset. I won't care. Uh, you know. So... Uh, I, I, I'll say this much, maybe maybe make it, uh, may, maybe put it on Seth, because if Roman's going to be universal champion, if any, if you, if anybody wants Finn to get the universal title back, uh, you know, they can, because they can't have Finn beat Brock, but they can have Finn beat Roman, so, yeah. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, the fatal four-way for the United States Championship match. Orton will not be keeping this. Uh, 
And I don't think it's going to go on Rusev either. I know a lot of people now think that because he's been added, but I really think that if Shinsuke wins the WWE title, they should move Rusev into working with Shinsuke for the WWE title. I think that's the way that should go. Um, I, I personally, I've, I've felt from the beginning that Jinder is going to walk out of WrestleMania as United States champion, which is perfect because he is an, he is an anti-American heel, it's perfect for him to be United States champion because it's going to piss people off. <laughs> I mean, it works. So, um, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Nia will walk out women's champion. Uh, that's not even a question. It's just a question of whether or not it's a squash match or Alexa puts up a fight. Um, so, the, uh, the bar versus Braun and whoever his mystery partner is. I'm not even going to speculate as to who his partner is. Um... You know, and Braun will definitely be walking out of there with the tag team titles. Um, the three-day between the Usos, the New Day, and the Bludgeon Brothers. The Usos can retain. I'll be happy. The Bludgeon Brothers can win. I'll be happy. I think the Bludgeon Brothers are going to win. Just keep the belts away from New Day, and I'll be happy. I also think we may see the destruction of the New Day. This would be good, because if we, if we could have a Big E heel turn, Big E could be a real championship contender for the WWE Championship. I really believe that. If he could ditch... Uh, you know, the, the, the clownish behavior, he could be a real, real contender. So, um, uh, I already gave you my prediction for the uh, Charlotte versus Asuka, uh, Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Uh, I obviously think that Ronda and Kurt will win. If they lose, that's just been a giant waste. I think this match is going to be a train wreck to begin with. I think it's going to be handled poorly like they've handled the build-up. And, uh, yeah. Uh, the Hobbit and Shane versus Cammy. Um, they're going to have Cammy win so they can get rehired. Um, I I'm almost positive of this. Uh, which pisses me off because, again, I don't like those two. Of course, I don't like Daniel Bryan either. So it's like, God. This, this match might be my other bathroom break. Uh, but, and, and that's it. So, uh, guys, I'm, uh, I'm not going to go live, okay? Uh, I'm, it's, it's become far too difficult to do that. Uh, I am going to do review shows for TakeOver and WrestleMania, and I'm going to continue to do my weekly review shows. Um, so you're going to get these things. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Ken Carnage. And until next time, carnage is right around the corner.